Welcome back to Little Memphis Classic. We're in my latest purchase, my 1972 Rover P6. It's a V8 one automatic and um, it's in a gorgeous shade of red. We'll go outside and have a look at it in a little bit. As I'm filming this right now, the third video has just gone live where you guys get to hear this thing fire up for the first time. And doesn't that engine sound really sweet? So far, reading through the comments, you guys seem to really enjoy this car and um, it's been some of the best videos I've had on the channel for a long time. I'm getting a lot of views and a lot of really good comments. So I'm really happy about that. It was a little bit of a gamble. Um, the story behind buying this car, uh, for those who don't know, I got a Renault Clio a couple of years ago for free. It didn't really run right and had a lot of issues. I ended up fixing that car up and I sold it for a profit. And with that profit, I was looking to flip it into a classic. So I bought this with the profit of that. And the plan was, you know, sell it on. And um, uh, we'll see about that. We'll talk about that a little bit later if that's going to be the plan or not. But we'll walk around the car a little bit. And I want to tell you guys sort of the immediate plans of what's going on with the Rover P6. I have it parked right here next to my 1977 Jaguar XJ12. So I'm going to take this out for the first time this year, probably tomorrow. This is first trip of the season. See how it goes. Shouldn't be anything wrong with it. Fired up pretty much right away and just drove out here. I'm going to clean it off a little bit and then take it for a little bit of a spin. But here is the P6. It's in, I believe, Monza Red. If I understand, that's the name of this color. And I've come to understand a couple things that are rare about it. It's the headrests. I absolutely love those. And this has everything that I want in a P6. So I told you I've been looking at, I've been looking at several ones. I've been looking at V8 ones. I've looked at four cylinder ones, same thing, but I wanted a V8. I wanted the ET headrests in front and possibly in the rear. I wanted an interesting color outside. So I didn't want a brown one or a green one. Anything. I wanted something bright, a white one or a red one. I wanted, this style of dash and I also didn't want such a late one where you know you didn't have ET headrests and you got the later interior so sort of 1972 is the one I wanted I also wanted one that didn't have any rust and um, that was in pretty good shape so for those who don't know I have found zero rust on this car and we've been through it everywhere underneath and everything it's in really really good original shape one of the best ways to show it is, well, I can't do it right now, but if you pull up right here under the seat squab, it's completely brand new under there. All the seam sealers from the factory and everything. And if you pull up on the carpets here, I mean, everything is just perfect underneath everywhere. Look at the sides of the doors, everything. So I managed to buy a rather, rather nice one. So that's a really fun part, but let's talk about the immediate plans because it's still off the road. It does run, but there are some things I do want to fix on it. And I have ordered parts. I made a big order from Wins, which seems to be the place to get it. Oh, I need two hands to get this open and then we'll continue talking about the parts I got for it. That ended up being quite the ordeal. We're going to have to lubricate all this up because as soon as I pulled it, just because it's facing down, it would unlatch, but it wouldn't get pushed up by the spring. So I have to pull the latch now and use a clothes peg there. So also known as a choke adjuster on a mini, but yeah, it's falling apart. It's a clothes peg. It's one of those that I found outside, you know, on the lot and it's been out all all winter but have that open like a lubricate now underneath here we got it running and it runs really well so of course we're going to change the oil and filters i have that on order can't really get an oil filter for these locally so i ordered a couple so i have them um carbs seem to be working well and the fuel system seems to be clean ish even though it's old fuel but what i want to do is we're going to drain the fuel tank using the pump get as much out as we can and then just put in a fresh um yeah fresh tank of fuel in it replace these fuel lines and then i just bought a carb kit just a gasket set because i just want to take them out and clean out the 
inside of the float chambers just make sure that they're okay put it all back together new gaskets here as well then put the air filter housing and all that back on i order coolant hoses for it as well because they're they are the most rock hard coolant hoses i've ever seen so we'll do that and i got a new belt this isn't cracked or anything but it looks to be quite an old one because it's a unit part one so it's probably really really old i have also checked the brake hoses and they're pretty old looking and a little bit dry rotted so i have new brake hoses as well and then we'll try and bleed the brakes and hopefully they work because it just feels like there's air in the lines um spongy pedal but then as you get really really far down they actually do bite and then they also do release so that seems to work really well i've topped up the transmission fluid just a little bit because it was slow going into gear so when it's fully warmed up later we'll check that's fine but that's in the future you're going to change that out as well it doesn't smell burnt or anything but i don't know how old it is and so it's a good idea to change that out i also got a new thermostat for it thermostat gasket i got new spark plugs for it i got new contact breakers the points in there condenser and i got the correct coil that is the incorrect coil for this car because it's a ballast system you need a 1.5 ohm coil and that's a 3 ohm coil so i got the right coil on the way and a couple of things so for now i want to keep this thing on points and just set it with dwell and i think it's uh, going to work well might do electronic ignition in the future but for now that's what we're going to do as for the engine bay step one just going to detail it up a little bit in certain areas i think a little bit later uh, if this car ends up staying i will probably remove the manifold and the rocket covers get those uh, you know stripped down and painted and look really nice and probably try and i mean that's the thing either you paint all of this and then you get new stickers or you say that this is pretty pretty decent original patina and just try and fix it up as much as possible maybe paint the top of the rad and things i don't know i'm a little bit i haven't decided about that part yet as you saw in the uh two videos ago i did try a little bit on the chrome here the so chrome is going to look pretty good on the car and i think so will all the paint with a really good detail as well the only thing i've seen i probably want to do something about is the wheels See, they're looking a little bit rusty underneath here so i think we'll take those off clear them down and use some uh, uh two-part black paint on them so they look nice i think they're supposed to be black original so that could be a fun project to do as well i do have that missing piece of trim there and i do have a couple extra of these so either i'm gonna fix that or i'm gonna buy a whole set of new clips that's how you could get those other than that with the paint there's a couple scratches and things we're going to try and get out there's really just two paint imperfections there's a scratch here where some moisture has gone in between so i want to fix that and i want to fix that little chip right there other than that paint is really really good on this car interior wise it's just dirty it's just really really dirty so i want to clean everything up I want to steam clean the carpets and everything remove those uh, have it look nice headliner is absolutely perfect and then just you know feed the leather on the nice i mean it's still pretty supple but just feed everything and make it look really really nice i don't think i want to color anything in i sort of do enjoy this little bit of patina but just clean it up and make it look really nice clean up the sides here as well and on the inside there's just one thing that's broken and that is the gear knob this top plastic part is loose i want to see if that's supposed to be glued on or what the case is and then get that glued on otherwise i think it's pretty sorted on the inside and then uh once that is done i think it might be time to take this thing on you know a car show or something i'm usually just going on different jack shows It'd be fun to go to a you know general maybe british car show or just a rover show that would be really fun we moved to the back of this rover here in the back seat and if you're a tall guy like me and the front seat is all the way back it's a bit of a tight squeeze in the back but if you have a shorter person driving no problem or a shorter person sitting in the back or kids really no problem at all but it is 
it's not a big car inside but it's a cozy place to be i really really do like it and these seats are very very comfortable especially the front seats are some of the most comfortable seats i felt in a classic car especially with the big headrests very very comfy and the rear seat with the headrests are really comfy as well you could probably fall asleep here so what am i gonna do with this car fix it up continue trading well we're gonna fix it up however I'm going to keep this one for a while. I'm going to fix just the basic things on it right now to get it running and looking nice. And then we're going to enjoy it this summer, see what I think of it. I haven't really driven it long distances at all. It's just, you know, really start it up and just make sure it goes in gear and out of the workshop. That's it. When I fix the brakes and all that before we actually drive it and then get it inspected. But if it drives as well as it looks, I think I'm going to, I think I'll be keeping this one for a while. Also because you guys seem to really, really enjoy it. That's also the thing when you, when you're like me and you run a YouTube channel, all the cars, I mean, of course I can have a car that you don't like, but it's, it's more fun if I can show it on videos and you guys actually like it. And you guys seem to really like this one. So let me know in the comments down below. Are you happy that this one is staying? Um, I'm happy that it's staying for a while, but if I don't enjoy driving it or if, you know, you know, three times on a tow truck or something like that, then maybe we'll get rid of it. But what about the trading up? Well, I'm going to have to find something else that we'll use for trading up series. I still want to do that series. It's going to be really fun, but we'll find something else. But this time I'm going to try and buy something that, um, that I don't want to keep. So I'm not going to buy cars that I absolutely love and been looking for. I think that's the mistake with trading up. Don't buy things that you actually want. So uh, lesson learned there. But... I did get a really cool Rover P6, you know, in the meantime. So there's going to be a little bit of pause on the videos here, um, maybe for a week or so until the parts arrive, or maybe they arrive really quickly. I do not know. It's the first time ordering from this place. But as soon as I get the parts, we'll do like a major service of the engine, uh, get that up and running. Then we'll go through the brakes, do a couple other small things, and then hopefully this thing gets inspected back on the road and we can see what it's like to drive. Anyways, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with friends. And if you're not already right, subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel. It really does help out a lot. Till next time, I'm Adam. This was a little bit of a classic. I'll see you soon.